joint, then we go maybe more single joint kind of isolation exercises, smaller muscles at the end. This is something that um, the coach and I have been kind of experimenting with. There's a coach, and if anybody's interested in either for yourself, trying to work on getting stronger, or if you're interested in strength and conditioning and you want to try to try some different type of programming, there's a coach at a University of Minnesota named Cal Dietz, C-A-L-D-I-E-T-Z, if I'm not mistaken, who I heard on a Barbell Shrug podcast talk about his tri-basic program. So I bought it. It's like almost 400 pages. It's, uh, you know, it took me weeks. I'd be on the treadmill, get my cardio, and just like kind of reading through this program. And it's crazy how, sh I mean, I have athletes that are getting strong as hell on this program. It, it's, and mind you, I was going from more, from more linear periodization, where basically I would have uh, almost like it's progressive overload, whereas if we just trained and we just did our 1RM, let's say week one of a strength phase, we're working at 75%, five reps. Okay, then maybe week two, we're doing... 75, 77.5, 80%. So we're kind of creeping up back towards their one rep max. If that makes sense, does that make sense? So we're just kind of progressing each week. This is a little bit different. So what his concept is to kind of to train through the stretch shortening cycle. So if you think of a, if you think of a contraction, right? When I, if I do a jump, when I jump, that's a concentric, right? When I land, that's the eccentric, that's the muscle lengthening. And then there's that time kind of in between the lengthening and the contraction. Um, I used to, I think I learned it was an uh, amortization phase, but instead we substitute isometric for that. And what it is, is you basically work two to three weeks working on eccentric strength, two to three isometric, two to three concentric. So what I did was with, with my more kind of, no, I did an inexperienced team and an experienced team. What I did was I did two weeks of just high volume. 12 week, uh, excuse me, 12 reps, weights on them, lightweight, let's just move some weight around. And I said, Heck, screw it, I'm just gonna see how this works. That's the cool thing is you get to experiment in this field. I'm not doing anything dangerous, but at the same time, it's cool for me to see, okay, I've done linear periodization. We test, we retest, people's numbers get higher, they're getting stronger, I feel like that's working. Um, I'm working with junior college athletes that don't have a ton of years of lifting experience. So anybody that's new to the weight room is gonna have a ton of, uh, they're, they're how am I trying to say this? I guess they're more inclined to make bigger types of strength gains because their muscles aren't accustomed to this. Older athletes don't make as, as much gains as the newer athletes. They do get stronger, but the jumps aren't as big. Okay, so what we did was first week, eccentric, we basically did a, a two-day lifts. We did a, a high day and a medium day because a lot of my teams only meet twice a week or, um, yeah, at this point, twice a week. We did a high day and a low day. Um, what we did was on day one, if not mistaken, on day one we did eccentrics. What does that mean? Back and his main movement is squats. We took five seconds to load, to deload. So we took five seconds to get to the bottom, and then they drive out each rep. Five seconds, one with that, and their partners, their spotters counted them. We had safeties on just in case they couldn't drive out. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000. Explode out. So we did eccentrics just one day a week, day one for two weeks. Next two weeks, isometrics. Put a bar on your back, boom, we're gonna drop in the bottom, we're gonna hold it for five seconds, boom, we're gonna drive out. Okay, so we did eccentric two weeks, isometrics two weeks, and then the last two weeks, concentric, it was just regular tempo. I had people who were repping, and, and mind you, it was just like, I wanna say, volume is really low, maybe two reps this last week. I had people hitting their previous max from the previous year, easy, like beyond that, like 30 pounds, 20 pounds, beyond, 40 pounds beyond their max for reps. They could only get one rep at the, the year before. <clears throat> I think I have some video on here. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> so if I can skip to this, this dude Sully, when he walked in the weight room summer before last, I've heard this other strength coach say like sometimes like, these kids walk in, they look like, um, Maybe giraffes, you know, like they come out the womb, they just they can't even, they don't know what they can't even move. So Sully, Sully came in, the coach was like, I mean, you, you can keep the class, you can lift, I mean, we practice these days a week, but it just didn't, he didn't make it seem promising to this kid, but the kid stuck through it, he lifted. That first year, he made some pretty good gains. This year, 
Um, I was, I mean, to, to, to think, if I would have seen Sully Day 1 and somebody would have said, that kid's going to be squatting over 200 pounds, I would have said, nah, there's no way. This is, this is him testing. He hit 205 for one. Good depth. Got it. And then the kid behind him, day one this summer, another giraffe. This kid, like, bad, bad posterior tilt. Uh, had a goblet squatting a lot. He couldn't even put the bar on his back over the summer. You can't really tell from these videos. Both these kids are really thin. Um, Jared's a little bit smaller. This dude hit 240. I mean, if you would have told me in July this kid would be hit 245, I'd be like, nah, he'd break his back if he tried to. <laughs> but Jared, he put in the work through this triphasic program. This is legit. He gets low. Right? I mean, so I'm a testament to the program. I feel like it's been working really well, and I think I even have. So Sully, his one rep, treats, uh, yeah, pre-test squat last year, 155. 